And hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Kent Holstey Podcast right here on the KentHolsteyPodcast.com website and as well as the YouTube channel. I'm so glad that you decided to click this link and join in the conversation as today we are going to talk about something that kind of is not easy to talk about. And that is the fact that we don't like to always own up to what we do. And I think a lot of it has to do with pride. I think a lot of it has to do with us not wanting to see the full truth out of the situations that are happening. So we're going to talk about this and much more on today's podcast. So don't you go anywhere. Have you seen the Kent Holstey Podcast website yet? If you haven't, now's a good time. It's all at www.kentholsteypodcast.com. It's more than just podcasts. There's interviews, blogs, sports talk, the corner ropes, circle of friends, and so much more. So what are you waiting for? Check it out today. It's at www.kentholsteypodcast.com. Dot com. Join the community. All right, so today we're talking about not owning up to the situations that happen in our life and the consequences that can happen when we do such things. You know, I'm a prime example of this. You know, I've always said I've been very open and honest about the situations that have happened in my life and owning up to the things that I know that I did wrong is something that is very important to me now and unfortunately it wasn't when I was growing up. But, you know, growing up as a kid, I think that's where more of the problems are what I'm talking about. You know, I didn't want to own up to the fact that I wasn't always honest about my feelings. I didn't own up to the fact that, you know, the things that I did, the choices that I made were not always the best. I did things that I later regret big time as far as, uh, you know, drinking and smoking because it, it led to a long life, even though I'm in my mid thirties of, you know, thinking that, Oh, I just need that one cigarette when I'm stressed or, Oh, I need to go out and have a drink when, you know, maybe it's not necessarily the right time or that I have the money for it, which to be quite honest, I haven't drank in quite some time. You know, I've said it before. I have alcohol in my house, and I rarely touch it. Uh, but back in the day, you know, it was difficult because I wanted to be in the in crowd. I wanted to hang out with my friends, and that's what they were all doing was partying and having a good time. And so... You know, it, it's, it was tough growing up because I pretty much dug the bed that I was laying in and I didn't own up. I didn't say the things that I should have. And the biggest thing that I think we can take from this is when you don't, the biggest thing is you're, the only person you're hurting is yourself. You're not hurting anybody else around you. Maybe you are in some ways, but in the full capacity of things, you're the only one that's hurting yourself. And as much as you want to blame others for the things that happen in your life, you are the only one who should be pointing blame at yourself. Because nine times out of 10, we are the problem. We are the situation that is making these things. 
it's not other people. Yes, there may be other people involved. Yes, there might have been other people that were encouraging it or that were trying to make you feel like you had to act out in certain ways. But I've said this many, many times. You are in control of your own actions. And the way that you present yourself can be looked back on for many, many years going forward. No matter how hard you try to hide it or act like it didn't happen, it doesn't go away. It's kind of like when you're trying to tell your kids about social media and posting things online. They can delete it, but in some way, shape, or form, it's still out there. It doesn't go away. And so that's that's the one thing I want to make clear about, you know, owning up to the things that you do. It, it doesn't go away. It's still there. The best thing you can do is ask for forgiveness from those that you affect. But most of all, you have to forgive yourself. And if you don't forgive yourself, then you're not going to go anywhere. You're not going to go far. You're not going to do things that are going to make you successful in the long run. And I always talk about that rotating carousel that goes in that constant same direction, going nowhere else. And that's what you do when you don't own up to the things that you say and the things that you do. And the biggest part of healing from that is asking for forgiveness. So let me start off. If you're listening to this and you're someone that I may have done something or said something to, I want to apologize to you. And the biggest part of my healing is these past three years, I've tried to do whatever I can to move forward. And I can't move forward unless I've corrected the things that I've done wrong and that first step is apologizing, asking for forgiveness. Now, I know there's a lot of people who may not be as willing or don't have that ability to forgive and forget, and I'm not expecting anybody to. But for me, the only thing I can do is at least say it, and whether they want to accept it, that's their choice. I can't do anything about that. And that's one of the other things that I've struggled with in my life is not owning up to the fact that, you know, as much as things hurt and I may not understand, there's nothing that I can do in certain situations to to understand things, to to learn. Sometimes you just go without knowing. And as much as it would be nice, there's nothing you can do about it. The only thing you can do is turn around and put your best foot forward and try to walk in to the right direction to where you can do good. But it's very, very easy to make that turn and go to the wrong direction. And you may think at first that it's the right one. And sometimes, you know, there's there's various different forks on the road where you ha- you have to back up and you retrace your steps and try to find the right way out. Life is like a maze. Sometimes you you hit a wall and you, you got to back up and and go around and try to find your way out. But that's the the amazing thing about life. You know, we we try to focus on things that don't require hard work and effort. But isn't that part of the thrill of life is trying to, to figure out where your road leads? At least it does to me. So when we come back, we're going to talk more about owning up to life situations within your life. Are you looking to join a good community? with people that truly care about your feelings and emotions? Well, I encourage you to check out Kent Holstey Podcast website where you can find Circle of Friends. 
Circle of Friends is a place to be a community, but more importantly, a family. This is a page to be supportive by sharing special events that are positive or even letting others pray for you. A place that people can come together without fear of being judged, no matter of race or disabilities. A time to be that person that takes the time to care for others when it's needed most. We are all not just friends, we are family. It's the Kent Holstie Podcast website at kentholstepodcast.com with Circle of Friends. So on today's podcast, we are talking about owning up to what you say and what you do in your life. We've talked about the first step is forgiveness within yourself and forgiveness of others. And now we're going to move into another scenario of this whole conversation. And that is some questions. So in the comment spot below on the YouTube channel, put your, your thoughts and comments about this subject now. Let me make it very, very clear. And I've said this many, many times on all of the other podcasts. Clearly, I'm human. I've made mistakes in my life, and I'm not proud of them. This isn't a time to bash me. This isn't a time to say things that are hurtful towards other people. So when you comment, make sure that they are appropriate. In fact, this podcast is about positivity and uplifting others. So... If you're not going to post something that is just that, then please don't post anything at all. I don't want to block anybody. I don't want to delete comments because people want to be, you know, what they call trolls online. Um, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that person. I want to be the person that enjoys the content just like you and see what other people have to say. And this is a support group. This is a community. This is a family. And let's treat it like that. So if you see someone who posts something that kind of relates to what you've been through in your life as far as the bad choice of not being honest about the things that you've done and owning up and the consequences that caused in your life, put that in the comment spot. You know, what lessons did you learn about the positives of being upfront and honest about the things that have happened in your life? You know, has friendships been restored? Has new friendships started because of you owning up to certain things. You know, us owning up to things just doesn't happen within our family life. It just doesn't happen within our friendships, our relationships. It, it happens in our jobs. You know, there's, there's plenty of times where people choose to be dishonest. And the aftershocks of that is sometimes when businesses or jobs don't have the answer that they're looking for, everybody else gets the punishment. And, you know, I, I've seen the chain reaction of what that does. It doesn't make anybody happy. People not owning up to a situation just makes the work environment and everything else feel more stressful. And I don't know about you, I don't like working at a place where there's a lot of drama and stress. You know, I like to, to work where people are excited and happy to be there. You know, where I'm working right now, um, when I'm not working on the website and, and this podcast and blogs, um, there's someone I work with that is very upbeat, has a lot of energy, 
and everybody there likes to joke around and have a fun time, and that makes the workday go by so fast. And there was a situation today when I was working where I made a mistake with an order, and I owned up to it. In fact, I didn't just own up to it. I joked about it. I felt good about it. In fact, I they thought I was embarrassed, but I was more um, laughing and smiling at my, what I did. Um, that's what stinks about wearing face masks is you can't see people's reactions. So what looked like me being down about it, I was actually um, quite the opposite i was laughing and just <laughs> thought it was funny and i i said something that made everybody laugh and you know i think that's how sh we should treat the way we own up to things you know depending on the severity of the situation like when you do make a mistake and you you know that you did something wrong own up to it but if the situation is appropriate you can joke about it you know make a diss on yourself sometimes it's not a bad thing just because you, you know, cut yourself short a little bit doesn't mean that you're doing a, a disfavor to yourself. Uh, in fact, it it makes you feel better in a way, but it also shows other people the type of person that you are. And humility is something that's very big to me now. I appreciate people that have a heart. And you can tell someone when they are sincere about their their issues and the, the things that they feel bad that is on their heart when they have true, raw emotion. You know, some people were raised in a a home where you were told to be tough, that you have to put on this, this shield, if anything, to hide or to block sensitivity because showing emotion is a sign of weakness. And unfortunately, I don't believe in that. I think showing emotion, I think showing uh, compassion is something to be admired about someone. You know, it's hard to find people with true raw emotion these days because everybody within this this virus has everybody on edge. People, you know, are kind of sensitive to certain things. But, you know, if we all came in together and just showed sincerity with how we present ourselves, how we apologize, how we own up to the things that we do. I think this world would be a t completely different place. You know, the, the thing that really got me thinking about this is the fact that, you know, my situation in my life caused a lot of, you know, problems within my children's lives. My oldest has been affected by the multiple marriages that have failed. Um, she doesn't believe that she should respect or do certain things based on my faults, my mistakes. And to me, that hurts. And, you know, I, I've owned up to what I've done and the things that have happened, and I've tried to explain to her many, many times why things happened the way that they did. And, you know, I don't think that sometimes teens, young adults don't always understand about 
certain life situations. You know, they expect everything to be perfect. And I think that's how it continues to go as we get into our adult form. We still expect perfection. But how can we have perfection if we're not owning up to the things that we do? When we're not owning up to the problems that we could have easily resolved if we just took that time to be up front and say, listen, I made a mistake. I didn't mean to do this. I didn't mean to do that. The biggest thing that you can do is it's just be honest and sincere and just let people know that you've affected like I have had to do with my daughter. And granted, it's hard to explain things and to show sin- sincerity when you're on the phone or you're on a video chat. You know, face-to-face interactions are make a world of difference when you're trying to accomplish something. So that's the other key advice that I have for you is if you're looking to end certain things that have happened in your life, um, the best thing you can do is just uh, do it in person and just make sure that they understand that, you know, this isn't a joke. This isn't something that you feel obligated to do it's just something that you know is the right thing to do and you know I've said it many many times you know I didn't expect to live my life being divorced multiple times that's not what I wanted and I've always said that I feel bad for the the kids because they have to deal with a, a broken home and the hardest thing I ha- I have to deal with is acknowledging and admitting that if I would have made better decisions and choices, things probably could have been differently. And I know a lot of those scenarios would require not having some of my kids in my life them non, not being in existence. And that's, that's hard because I don't want to wish that. I don't want to think that. So in those type of scenarios where, you know, y- you have those, those thoughts of, you know, oh, crud, you know, how, how can I think that way? How can you move forward from that? So put that in the comment spot. That's a good good question that to to answer there. And maybe you've been through that. You know, I think the best thing we can do as a community is stand together. And when we come back, we can talk about just that as we continue our conversation about owning up. Hey everyone, I just want to take this time to thank you for tuning in to today's show. Without your support and watching these videos, this podcast wouldn't be where it's at today. And the same goes for the website as well and the YouTube channel. So to help me out even more, if you haven't done so yet, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And don't forget to ring that bell so you can be notified when a new amazing content comes out. Also, Don't forget to check out all the other social media sites as well and like, share, and comment, and subscribe there too. It all is being a part of this community where we can come together and show that we care for one another so we can motivate and encourage others. So thanks again for tuning in, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the show. You know, the biggest thing that I love about doing these podcasts is, you know, hearing about what other people have to say and hearing the feedback from all the people that have told me that these topics have really 
made a difference in their life. You know, the only way we can get through our problems is by being positive and sharing our life experiences and talking about the things that have happened so other people don't feel alone, like they're the only ones who have gone through something. You know, when I was going through my situation with my divorce, I felt like I was the only one that felt alone, trapped, uh, mentally beaten down to the point where I just didn't see what good could come when I'm always getting, you know, the the short end of the stick, for say. Um, you know, there there could there could have been plenty of times where I could have gone deep in that hole and did something that could have jeopardized my life. But at the right time, an opportunity of a lifetime came and I worked in my own store that I had full control of and I devoted all my time and my energy, you know, making sure that that place was perfect, immaculate. And that hard work showed every single day. I turned my my pain and my hurt and I turned it into my motivation. You know, I, I had to own up and realize that, you know, I'm not going to go anywhere in my life thinking about the what ifs, the could have beens. I had to move forward. I had to do what I had to do to be successful and to restart my life and rebuild it in a way where I could know that I'm not going to let myself do the same mistakes that I made again. You know, I think that's the hardest thing about owning up is is admitting those failures. And I said that at the beginning. So what positives can we take from this? The positives is that when we say the things that are needed to, when we are honest, when we are up front, and we say the things that we have done wrong, it may not fix the situation 100% for everybody involved, but it fixes what's in your heart. You can change the world by, by being up front, being honest, being, being willing to unleash that, that sometimes very severe honesty. And sometimes you have to be hard on yourself. Sometimes you have to own up and say, yes, I am a complete screw-up. And that's just putting it lightly. And, you know, as much as we don't want to say that, we have to. And sometimes you have to take a hard look in the mirror and, and say it to yourself that, yes, I'm a screw-up, but I refuse to let that be my downfall, the reason why I should quit and give up. Because that does nothing good when you own up to the things that you've done, when you say and admit that, yes, I did that and I am sorry and I am sincere about what I'm saying to you, things will change. That's the positive. Knowing that you did the right thing. That's what this is all about. And you're not doing the right thing when you're just avoiding it. There's so many people who avoid confrontation because they're f afraid of what the end result will be. And there's some people who are afraid because in their past, there's been people that have knocked down the way that you felt, that told you that your feelings and your opinions don't matter. And you start to feel like, then why even bother 
owning up? Why even bother saying the truth if people are not going to believe you, if people are not going to trust you, if people are not going to, to give you the time of day? What is the point? The point is, eventually, when they start seeing this, the sincerity in your, in your voice, they see this, the sincerity in your emotions, your attitude, the way that your, your body movements are, they will see that they can start to trust, that they can start to regain the ability to believe in you. Because so many times when you you don't take that opportunity to be honest, to be open, to admit your faults and your wrongs, people start to get pushed away by that. People don't want to be around that. So change that. Because I believe that you can. It's very easy to do. You just have to try. So the question remains, how can we stand together as a community when it comes to owning up to situations in our life? You know, I think the biggest mistakes that we do as a community is not stand by together when it comes to our faults. We make community decisions that aren't always the greatest, whether it be school boards, city boards, state boards, country boards, <laughs> lumber boards. No, I'm joking. Um, there's there's so many different scenarios, but it, it also involves the community at home. And that's the most important one, is the fact that when you're not owning up to, maybe you're not spending enough time with your family, like I used to make that bad decision. You know, that's not good. You're not standing close. You're not staying firm together as a family. You're, you're only drifting each other apart. Another way that you can stand firm together as a community by owning up is the fact that sometimes we like to hide things. You know, uh, maybe there was an accident. Maybe there was a slight mishap and you needed some money and you had to sell some things that you had that have sent sentimental value and um, you were afraid to say, hey, I, I had to, you know, do something and we'll get it back, but I had to do it. You know, you got to own up to it. Or maybe you have spending problems. I've been there myself. I felt like I had to have the nicest things at home in order to make my family happy. And boy, was I wrong on that. The only thing I needed to be happy was just them. I didn't need good things. I could have lived in a cardboard box. I could have ridden a bicycle built for two and I would have been happy. It would have been tough, but it's funny how we always say that. As long as I have you, I don't need anything else. But when it comes down to it, we don't own up to the fact that that isn't always the case. We're always looking for more and bigger and better things instead of just admitting and being honest that what we truly have in front of us is good enough. So owning up to that, owning up to the things in your home, owning up to the things that you do with your kids. Your kids are just as important. So when you own up to your faults as a parent, that's a powerful thing to do. It teaches your kids that when you're honest about your faults and your, your flukes and your flaws, that it just means that you just made a mistake. It teaches your kids about you know, forgiveness and understanding. You know, we, d we don't teach our kids enough that being upfront and honest and owning up to what they do is important. I mean, look how many times 
kids get punished in, in schools because they lie about whether they cheated, whether they hurt someone in their class or someone in the playground. It, it happens. They don't understand the significance of when you own up, it, it, it helps you in the long run. The biggest lesson I learned in life, the more lies that you, t- you tell, the bigger of a hole you're creating in your life. And one of those days, the hole that you dig, you're not going to get yourself out of. And that's partially true. But I also disagree with that statement because if you truly want to get out of that hole, you can own up. You can change the situation. It doesn't matter if it happened years ago or if it happened yesterday. As long as you are honest and open and you say how you feel, everything is going to be okay. That's what we need to do as a community, standing together, admitting our faults, admitting that we are wrong sometimes, and showing that we are human, and showing that we do have a heart to care. So do that today. So if you like this podcast today, and this really has impacted your life to to really think about, you know, the things that you may have said and done, and how you may have not been upfront and honest, now's the time to change that. And I hope that this has kind of made you you think about that. So start a list. Start a list and and write down all the people that you've done wrong to. Write a list of all the things that you've done wrong to yourself. And don't you don't have to do it all in one day because that may be impossible. But as long as you tried to cross out one of those each and every day and try to fix it and mend it, I promise you something good is going to happen. So do that. Do that today. You might be surprised. So think and be positive. Do what you can today, not what you can't. To be honest. To admit when you're wrong. And not be selfish about your own feelings and emotions just because you want to hide. You don't want to be up front. So do that. Be honest. Be compassionate. Show that you have a caring heart. Because I believe in you. Don't you think you should too? And if you see someone who served our country, whether it be military, police, fire, medical, if they serve our country, take the two seconds that it takes to give an elbow, give them a fist bump, tell them how much you appreciate them for what they've done for us. You never know how much they might appreciate that one random act of kindness. So do it today. And till the next time we talk, I hope that you stay safe. I hope that you enjoyed your Mother's Day weekend. And we'll talk very, very soon. God bless. Mm-hmm.